Stream, a leading provider of blockchain technology and uh, famed in your world, famed in the Bitcoin world. What will rock me out of this slumber? Uh, volatility, the lowest since 2016. There's a deafening silence. Uh, what's going to rock Bitcoin above or below the 29,000 level? Adam, good morning. Uh, good morning. Yeah, I mean, I guess August is a quiet month in Europe. Lots of people on holiday. But uh, yeah, I think uh, Bitcoin tends to surprise people by, you know, they get bored and then suddenly something dramatic happens. So I think just leave it a while and something will happen. <laughs> well, event risk is always there, isn't it? Um, there's a halving event to come uh, probably in the spring of next year. What impact will that have? Um, well, I mean, it's something that if sort of there's some debate about whether it's priced in in the market, you know, some people will say, oh, it's priced in. But I think because of the generally high volatility rather other than the last month, it's quite hard to price in. Um, and it also punctuates the four year halving cycle, sort of economic cycle of Bitcoin. And historically, Bitcoin's done well. You know, within six or nine months after the halving, there's been a sort of price appreciation part of the cycle. Now, this this so time, what do you think is possible? Some, well, I I think some it's possible that we get to you know a new all time high like hundred thousand or more even before the halving, uh, simply for the reason that the last few years have been kind of a, a depressed market in general and in the crypto market through uh, you know a number of bankruptcies and DeFi failures. And uh, uh, things like that. Do you really think $100,000 is achievable in Bitcoin before the halving event? There's no fear that you're very resolute on that? Uh, yeah, I mean, actually, I infamously took a small bet with uh, somebody on Twitter on that. It was just some conversation about whether it would happen or not. And this fellow said, well, let's bet on it. So I let him pick the price. And so we're on. Let's see if it happens. You got skin in the game. Good man. Um, look, your company, you raised $125 million. You come from the mining industry, the mining sector. Um, I, $125 million, do you need more money? What, what are you going to do with that money briefly? Uh, that, that was just the latest uh, fundraising activity. And so we've probably raised about 400. We've been around since 2014. So it's primarily, well, there's two parts of it. One is uh, layer two Bitcoin technology like Liquid, which is a securitization layer for Bitcoin something we issue investment products on and the other part is hosting so we provide hosting for institutional miners so people like fidelity we host uh, all of their miners in our facilities it's kind of like co-location for for mining people doing mining at fund level i mean just on that mining uh, narrative and the facilities they're in do you see a continued bottleneck in terms of the infrastructure in mining, where are we in that cycle? Yeah, I mean, actually, that's the uh, subject of a upcoming financial product from Blockstream. But basically, at this going back a couple of years, there was a shortage of miners going into the Bitcoin bull market because the price appreciated, mining profitability appreciated, and the manufacturers couldn't produce them fast enough. At this stage in the cycle, there's actually a surplus of miners and a shortage of ready-to-use hosting infrastructure and you have to bear in mind a lot of the Bitcoin ecosystem is underfunded, undercapitalized. So people are using leverage, which tends to exacerbate volatility as well. Now, I said that you're famed in your own world. And of course you are. You're one of the original gangsters. I think that's what you referred to. What we're all curious to know is obviously Satoshi uh, Nakamoto apparently communicated with you in 2008. Have you spoken to this fabled person recently? What do you think? he or she would make off um, Bitcoin now? Do you think that there'd be 100,000, there'd be a buy? They'd, they'd agree with you, 100,000 is on the way. Have you communicated? Have you had any communication? No, I don't believe he's been heard from since something like 2011. And I only communicated uh, by email at the time. So, I mean, I guess we don't know exactly how many Bitcoins Satoshi has, but it would make him, you know, probably one of the 20th wealthiest people in the world at that, at that kind of price.
Okay, so radio silence. Well, he knows where to catch you. You're obviously making bets on Twitter. Well done. Good to have your call this morning uh, on the miners uh, and indeed on the halving event and where prices will go. That's Blockstream's chief executive and co-founder, Adam Back.